Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Alexander the Great remarked that the peoples of Asia were slaves because they had not learned to pronounce the word no. Let that not be the epitaph of the English-speaking people. Yeah, let that not be the epitaph of the English-speaking people. Just say no. Just say no to Sharia law. Just say no to Islamists. Just say no to Islamofascism. Just say no to Barack Hussein Obama's attempts to destroy freedom of speech in the United States of America. Just say no. You know the whole story, right? One of two Garland, Texas shooting suspects identified. Muslim converts, African Americans converted in prison. Why in the world they permit this to go on in our prisons is not a, not, not a story I don't understand. I know exactly what it is. It's a recruiting ground. A recruiting ground. A recruiting ground. And who saved the day? Who saved us from the Islamo-fascists with automatic weapons and body armor? Who saved Pamela Geller and Gerd Wilders and the others in the audience in Texas? who they're exercising their American right to freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. Who saved their lives? Was it Marvin in the ACLU at NYU? Was it Harriet at Harvard Law? Was it an LGBT at Bolt Law School who saved the lives? Lecturing us about, well, you know what, tolerance. No, it was a traffic cop. (laughs) FBI was there. (laughs) <laughs> Department of Homeland Security was there. They did nothing. Nothing. They probably dropped their guns out of their holster and crapped in their pants. All of the highly trained FBI, where were they? Nothing. They had to probably had to call Central Command and ask Eric Holder if it was okay to shoot the radical Muslims who were shooting the place up. But a Texas traffic cop saved the lives last night when he took down two heavily armed Muslim men, Muslim converts, Storming a building where a draw the prophet Muhammad contest was taking place. He killed both of them with his with his handgun, even though they had automatic weapons. Even though there were local police, a SWAT team, FBI and ATF at the event, they did nothing. They were consulting their handbooks on what they could do. They're probably still consulting the handbooks to see if they can arrest the Texas traffic cop for shooting the Muslims and killing them before they killed others. And who did it? The police officer who has not been identified by Garland Police Department officials saved lives. Well, don't let Obama know that, because the next thing you know, the FBI will be coming for the traffic cop. He didn't ask Eric Holder if he can kill the uh, the uh, the uh, the murderers. Handgun shot him dead. The vermin drove 1,100 miles from Phoenix to invade the contest at a suburban Dallas venue. They shot off their assault rifles, wounding a security guard hitting at least one police car. Meanwhile, the event was protected by a SWAT team, FBI and ATF, who apparently ran away. Guns fell out of their hands. All the girls in the FBI, all the girls in the ATF, they ran away. They did nothing. A traffic cop saved them. Muslims were angry because the men wearing body armor were doing this for Muhammad. Wearing body armor, they drove up to the Curtis Colwell Center on Sunday night and began shooting at a security officer with assault rifles. They sent out tweets before their Muslim attack. May Allah accept us as Mushahadeen. No kidding. Well, I hope that they're in heaven raping the infants they've been promised. How's that for a reward? Can you tell me anything sicker than that? That a man believes if he goes and kills innocent people, he gets to rape infants in the next world? Is this not psychosis? How do we permit this to get into this country, this, this, this virus? The unidentified Garland police officer who spends most of his shift assigned to traffic duty killed both suspects who were each dead at the scene. I'm surprised the FBI hasn't authorized an investigation into the traffic cop. No doubt he was a white racist cop. 
And no doubt those killed were, well, they were African-Americans, so we know they were victims. Even though they had body armor, they came there to kill. Because they were black and because they were Muslim, they got a twofer. And no doubt the traffic cop is a white man. He's definitely got the eight ball against him. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that Obama and the FBI, the ATF will look into his background. The unidentified Garland police officer who killed both of them. That's the story. What more do you want me to say about it? That CNN is taking the side of the radical Islamists trying to kill free speech in America? That even Fox News is not taking the right side on this? What does it prove to you? What do you want to say about this? What do you think about this? Who was the shooter? Elton Simpson. Another, another prize from the gutters of America. Garland shooting suspect Elton Simpson's father said, my son made a bad choice. You hear this? The father of one of the suspected Islamic gunmen in the Garland, Texas shooting told ABC News that his son made a bad choice. Dunstan Simpson said, we are Americans and we believe in America. What my son did today reflects very badly on my family. Oh, I wonder why I didn't say that before. Dunstan Simpson said his son, the murderous Islamist who is now in heaven raping infants, worked at a dentist's office, but was on vacation for the last few weeks, and the two last spoke three weeks ago. In other words, the father knew nothing. He dummied up. All the parents, are, uh, every time there's an Islamic attack in America, the parents say he was a good boy. We had no idea he was radical. We thought he was a regular guy who cleaned teeth. The elder Simpson said that while he was a strict father, Elton was always a good kid. Meanwhile, followers of ISIS had been sending messages about the event in Texas for more than a week, calling for attacks. One reference January's Charlie Hebdo massacre in France and said it was time for brothers in the United States to do their part. Brothers is a code word for blacks. Not even Muslims, and now it's brothers. Now all blacks suddenly are honorary Muslims to, the, to, to ISIS. They're trying to take the rage that Obama has triggered in Ferguson, the rage that Obama has triggered in Baltimore, and he's trying to now tie that into Islam. So they're trying to get them angry. So who is this guy, Simpson? Well, he was well known to the FBI. He was an informant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Five years ago, he was convicted for lying to federal agents about his plans to travel to Africa, where investigators alleged he planned to join a terror group. But they didn't arrest him. No, no. If you try to join a terror group, you'd be slammed into the slammer so fast your knees would be singing Dixie. But not him, because he's a minority. His lawyer, Christina Sitton, who represented this bum in the 2010 trial, said her former client had been on a no-fly list. I guess he could fly from Phoenix to, uh, to Texas. And that the FBI had attempted to get Simpson to cooperate with them even after his conviction. She, the lawyer said she saw him as harmless. He grew up the most normal guy, she said. Just a normal high school guy. Converting to Islam seemed like a good thing for him. Oh, Really? How'd that work out? Lawyer said converting to Islam seemed like a good thing for him. He had been going down a bad path, and then he found Islam. How'd that work out for him? He found Islam and became a murderer, a bloodthirsty murderer, that's all. Sitting the lawyer told ABC News, he never struck me as someone who would do this sort of thing. I'm not a bleeding heart. I'm a Republican. I've seen some pretty bad guys, and he seemed pretty normal. Well, I guess the lawyer ought to adjust her medication. The lawyer ought to go see her shrink and get, a, get a, a, a different titration since she didn't see who he really was. That's the opening to the show. It's the Savage Nation. What do you got to say about this? How do you feel about Hussein Obama triggering all these things in this country? How do you feel about that? How do you feel about CNN taking the side of the Islamics who want to take away our freedom of speech? I want to remind you of something. I'm the only American talk show host, actually the only member of the American media that I know of banned from entering Britain. Since 2009, I cannot enter this, the nation of Britain. Uh, and that is because, well, and it's a terrible thing. It's a terrible loss for me because I can't get the dental care that I want. And I can't get the cuisine that England is famous for. And I've been wanting since 2009. It's been many years now to go over there for some dental work in their socialized dental plan and go over there and get some great English cuisine. I mean, I can't get fish and chips here. But on a more serious note, I am banned from entering England for things I didn't really say, but they allege that I said about Muslims and Islam. Of course, I was a 1,000% right then, and I'm a 1,000% right now. Has the English government apologized to me? Have they paid me reparations for denying me this dental care all these years? No. 
But there's a bigger point to the story is I'm very familiar with freedom with what freedom of speech is. I'm the only uh, member of the talk show world who has won the Freedom of Speech Award. Well, maybe. No, that's not true. Some of them have, have bought it. I mean, I'm sorry. Some of their syndicators bought it for them. That's right. I'm sorry. I was wrong about that. But my favorite... Uh, my my famous speech on freedom of speech will be played later on the show. How do you feel about this? Do you feel that the um, organizer of the end, Pamela Geller, got what she deserved? She did this because she dared say, draw a picture of Muhammad. Now, I do remember when the vermin, excuse me, the Salenterites on the left, put Jesus Christ, the statue of Jesus Christ, in a jar of urine at the Brooklyn Museum a number of years ago, and the the uh, museum director giggled over it, saying it's freedom of speech. They teed over it. Well, it was freedom of speech. It was an artist. An artist could put Jesus in a, in a bottle of urine. Nobody burned anything down. Christians didn't put on body armor and get AKs and go shoot up the Brooklyn Museum because they're civilized people. We are not dealing with civilized people. We're dealing with, oh, use any expletive if you'd like. 855-407-282 is the phone number. I'm open for business. Let's go to Bill on WABC. Bill's going to give us his opinion. Go ahead, Bill. You want to know what I think? I think Pamela Geller is an egotistical egomaniac, totally irresponsible, and she's putting in danger the whole Jewish community in, in the United States. Because wait, 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 wait. So in other words, you would kill free speech for the Jewish community? Is that what you just said? Yeah, she's Jewish. You know that. And she's starting these ads here, and she's going to put ads on the buses. Uh, well, no, you're you're the kind of Jew who went into the into the uh, concentration camp because you didn't want to stir up any trouble with the Germans, right? You, you went into the boxcar because they said that uh, you'd be better off if the Jews went along with the German plan. Is that right? Well, I'm a Holocaust survivor. Don't put that on me, okay? All right, so you're a Holocaust survivor who learned nothing from the Holocaust. I learned one thing. You don't. What did you learn? What did you learn to bend over for fascism? He's a small minority, and we we and we're stupid if we start up with people. We got to keep our mouth shut and behave. Oh my God! Are you ever? Are you ever a Holocaust Jew? Are you ever a survivor who learned nothing? Pamela Geller is an irresponsible. You, you, no, she isn't. She's the bravest woman in the United States of America for daring to stand up to the Islamo fascists, who, by the way, would kill you and your whole family if they get power. Do you know that? No historical knowledge. She's actual dumbest, the dumbest. Well, what are you talking about? You're just spouting off your, your mouth like you're sitting in a bagel spewing locks on everybody. What, what are you talking about? Do you have any idea what the Muslims are doing around the world? So who are we to start up with them? Who are we to start up with them? What do you mean start up with them? What are you talking about? What are they doing in this country with AK-47s and body armor? Well, because Why hasn't the FBI arrested them in advance of this attack? Why aren't you asking that question? Why isn't your Obama government protecting you from the Muslims with body armor and AK-47s? Tell me why. If there are such people among them, a small minority of radical Islamists, why are we stirring the pot and starting up with them? Are we crazy? Are we what do you mean stir? What do you mean by stirring the pot? Saying if I, you put an ad on, the, on all the buses in New York City making fun of the Muslims and saying their religion is a religion of, 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 of murder. Are you crazy? Well, well, wait a minute. Excuse me, sir. Let me ask you something. Do you know anything about Islam or you're just terrified and you want to and you think that by appeasing the Muslims, they're going to they're going to protect you? Excuse me. I'm not talking about appeasing them. I'm talking about not stirring the pot and starting up with them. Mind your own business and go about your business. And leave In other words, do it the Jewish way. Put put your head down. Dummy up, keep your mouth shut, and pray to God that you're saved. Is that a do nothing to defend yourself? Defend myself against what? Put up the ads on the, on, the, on, the, on the subway? Defend yourself against what? Ask your Muslim cohorts what they think of Jews. Offending. Not Have offending. you ever read the... Excuse me. I don't know your first name. What is it? Abraham? It's Bill. Okay, Bill. Have you ever read the Quran? Do you know what it says about Jews? Listen... I know one thing about the... No, no, you don't. No, no, don't give me a deli answer. Stop spewing the locks. Have you ever read the Quran? Do you know what it says about Jews and Christians? I don't give a damn what it says about... Of course you don't. You're an ignoramus. You're an ignorant man. You're a coward. And you want everybody in America to be a coward like you. I believe in being sick. It is only people like Pamela Geller who will show America what Islam actually says in its holy book that can save us. Bill, that's the reality. 
I'm not inventing anything that I'm about to tell you on the show, but I can show you 130 quotes in the Quran which says, kill the infidel. Do you know what you are to them? You're an infidel, Bill. Did you know that? Well, we lived among the Arabs, we Jews, for thousands of years, and they, and they didn't bother us, okay? What do you mean? They, well, Bill, are, are you ignorant? Are you that stupid? Is that what they teach you in the temple? They didn't bother you? You're a second-class citizen who had to pay a tithing to the Arabs. So what? We pay taxes everywhere we go. We All right, now, now you're just pulling my leg. Now you just want to provoke me. Now I could see you're not real. I could see you just doing this to provoke me. All right, Abraham, uh, say hello to Isaac. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I was on the Alex Jones show earlier today for my new novel, Countdown to Mecca, which will be out next week. I fictionalized what's going on in this world because there's only so far I can go on this radio show. So in it, a group of generals plot to blow up Mecca, and my hero tries to stop them. Uh, of course, I will be misquoted, and the opposite will be said about the book. But when the generals meet, they're talking about what the Quran actually says. So one general says to the other, the Quran, sir, verse A12, just one of the more than 100, and, uh, 100 verses that call Muslims to war with what they call non-believers. General Brooks asked him, and who do, you, who do they call non-believers? General Reynolds interrupted, anyone who isn't Muslim. Quran 551 states that Muslims are not to take Jews and the Christians for friends. Allah describes them as unjust people, close quote. General Brooks said the Quran invokes kill the infidel 120 times. Brooks said quietly, almost to himself, as he gazed at the empty sky. What kind of sane nation permits these people to practice such open hatred? It's in Countdown to Mecca. The civil war I told you that Obama was planning is on. He triggered this. He planned it. He plotted it. He steamed up the mobs in the streets. And you have not seen anything yet. The beast is unleashed. Your president did this to this country. And the best is yet to come. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Two more Muslims attack a free speech event. No matter how provocative, that's what it was. It was to paint pictures of Muhammad. They may not like it, but we live in America. We don't happen to live in uh, Yemen. That's all. It's a little contest. Do a cartoon, of, um, reward the artist with a $10,000 who creates the best cartoon image of Muhammad, whose depiction is considered a sacrilege in Islam. See, not even allowed to draw in Islam. It's called a graven image. They're living in the ninth century. Oh, you can put a, a statue of Jesus in a jar of urine at the Brooklyn Museum. That, that's freedom of speech. You can spit on Christianity all you want, according to the left, but this is something different. This is sacred. This is sacred, says uh, Woody Allen, and their ilk. So they, they show up at the end of the event, the two uh, Muslim converts, two Muslim converts, uh, Nafir Sufi and Elton Simpson, converted in prison. Seven o'clock, they pull up into the parking lot entrance uh, blocked by a patrol car, right? So <clears throat> the unnamed officer and Bruce Joyner, an unarmed security officer, works for the local student district, they leave their cruiser to speak to the sedan's occupants. The Muslims exit their car and immediately open fire with assault rifles. They shoot Joyner in the ankle, while the other officer, unnamed, the traffic cop, kills them instantly with his handgun. <laughs> Six gun. Killed the two Muslims with their automatic weapons and body armor. Must have did, done two headshots. Good for him. Glad he had all that practice. Both men died there on the street next to their car. Now, we don't know whether the FBI is going to investigate the officer who actually saved everyone. This would probably be the job of uh, the uh, federal government to make sure that the officer who saved everyone uh, is persecuted for doing his job. Both gunmen were wearing body armor on top of it all. You hear this? And he killed him. Isn't that amazing? When he was faced with automatic weapons, he pulls out a pistol and shoots them both in the head. And he stopped them before they were able to penetrate the... Uh, 
the, uh, the event and kill people. An Islamic State fighter claimed the attack was carried out by two supporters of the militant group, according to the site, which tracks jihadist groups online. So that's the story. That's the story. That's America today. They're here. They're near. They're everywhere. They were in 50 states. They're in 50 states. So what would you like to do? Give up our free speech to placate them? What's next? How about breaking the crosses off churches? You know, that's offensive to Muslims. You know that in an area of Michigan a number of years ago, they had to stop church bells because it offended Muslims who invaded the community. I mean, excuse me, were moved into the community by the federal government under uh, previous administrations. They flooded them into an area that had been Catholic all its, uh, in all its existence. And the minute the Muslims achieved a population majority, they told the church to shut off the church bells. Because they're a religion of tolerance, you understand. And the church had to comply. They shut off the church bells. In the Middle East, they're burning churches. They're uh, taking the crosses off churches. They're knocking over headstones. They're destroying Christian art going back thousands of years. <clears throat> and then you have appeasers in America who say, shush, be a good boy. Be like the Jews in Germany. Shush, shush, still gehate. Keep walking. Don't say anything. Don't stir up the Nazis. Don't get those Nazis mad. They'll leave us alone. You know, if we don't say anything, I'm sure they'll leave us alone. Uh, they may be crazy, but they're not that crazy. They're not going to hurt us. We're one of the good ones. We're not going to say anything because they're good. They're good. They're good. They're very good. They'll be good to us anyway. Screw the guy. I don't care what they do to them. As long as they're good to us, you know? Keep your head down and don't say anything. Shush, Dylan Gehate. 855 400 Steve on WFTL in Fort Lauderdale. Fire away. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. You know, it never ceases to amaze me how little understanding the American public still has for this enemy. Um, one thing would be, well, in regards to the Christians in the Middle East, yeah, they're going to bear the brunt of this because all our actions in that region of the world are basically done with the Christian and Israeli stamp on it. That's just the fact of the matter. Now, so what, wait, wait. So the answer is for Christians and Jews to leave? No, they are going to be pillaged because no, you're, you're saying two things at once. You're saying the Muslims are being provoked by the presence of Christians in a land in which they've been for thousands of years? Is that what you're actually saying? The Christians have no right to be there? Okay, I'm talking about the Christians have lived very peacefully with the Jews in Syria for many years, but we supported that takedown of Assad. So this is all part of the establishment's agenda to basically stir the pot, like your last caller put it. And um, you, 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 know, you, you got the cart before the horse. You're saying that Muslims would be peaceful if there were no Christians and Jews provoking them. Isn't that what you're saying? Uh, no, they would not be at war with us. They would, they would be at... Really? Who, who would they be at war with? Um, themselves. They would be at war with the... Really? Party. Now tell me about their war against Hindus in the disputed area called Kashmir. No Christians involved, no Jews involved, Israel's not involved. Why are the Muslims at war with the Hindus over Kashmir? Is it the Hindus' fault as well? That's a great, that's a great point you're bringing up, Mike. Yeah, of course it's a great point because you're an ignoramus and you don't understand the bigger picture. Now I'll ask you another question, genius. Why are the Muslims in the Philippines at war with the Catholics in the Philippines? Nothing to do with Israel, nothing to do with the Middle East, Nothing to do with anything other than they want to take over the Philippines. They're called the Moros. In fact, in the Spanish-American War, the American troops who were sent there, the U.S. Army, went over there. They couldn't even kill the Moros with a 38 caliber handgun because they were stoned out of their gourds on some jungle weed. And that's when the 45 caliber round was developed because that would stop anyone no matter what they're on. But nevertheless, that's a side story. Uh, this war has been going on a thousand years. Do you know that or don't you? Tangent. Um, let's talk about the freedom. I said, do you know that their war against everyone else has been going on for a thousand years, Steve? Are you aware of that or not? Yes, I'm aware of the wars that are going on in the Middle East. But I'm No, you're changing the subject to make your point, but you're not making your point. You're losing your point. Islam has been at war with the world for over a thousand years. You know that, don't you? World? Uh, 
um, last time I checked, um, uh, they wouldn't even they wouldn't even be at war with us if it wasn't for us building military bases on the Arabian Peninsula. So, oh, Steve, you have it all backwards. You're another appeaser. You're another appeaser who says that if only we disappeared, they would live in peace. Then why don't they live in peace with their Hindu neighbors? Why do you need to? Why do you need to provoke the crazy? Why? No, no, don't change the subject because you just lost. Let's take us out of the quotient. They're at war with the Hindus over Kashmir. What does that have to do with us? Nothing. They're at war with the Catholics of the Philippines. Why? Why do they want to take over the Philippines and convert everyone to Islam? Do you know the answer to that? I care. Why do I care about who's dying on the other side of the planet? Why do I care about that? Ah, okay. So now it's not your problem that they're killing people all over the world. So you're the type of American who would have said, who cares that the Nazis are killing Jews in the concentration camp? It's not my problem. Is that what you believe? I'm not going to send my No, I'm asking you. No, no. I asked you a question. Let's say Steve was alive in the 1930s and he had reports that the Nazis were killing Jews and others in concentration camps. What would you have said to Roosevelt? Don't get involved. It's not our problem. No. <laughs> what do you mean? Ha ha ha. What would you have said? I'm telling you, I would have definitely... Look, would you have, would you have gone to war with the Nazis to stop them from killing innocent Jews and others? Of course you said you... You, you just said you would, right? Russia, we had an alliance with Great Britain. Of course, we, we backed up our allies. No, don't bring in Great Britain. I asked you, Steve, a question. You're alive in 1935, 6, 7, and you see the Nazis are killing minorities, Jews and others. What would you advise FDR? Don't get involved. It's not our business. Churchill came to us. What are you talking about? We would be no, no, don't change the subject. I asked you, Steve, what you would advise. Uh, what do you mean, what, what would I advise? Look, are you, are you dumb or you're just playing dumb? Listen to me. I'm not... Lynn, no, you listen to me. You're a nobody in the gutter with a radio in your hand. You're saying we have no right to defend innocent people around the world while they're slaughtering Christians, Yazidis. They're killing people, blowing people up. Setting them alive on fire. What What should we do? Nothing? We're paving the way for that to happen even worse beyond your wildest dreams with our foreign policy. That's a, that's so in I other words, we're, you're telling me that we're the reason they're setting people on fire in the Middle East. You are the reason why ISIS is what it is today. Yeah, I believe we embolden the enemy. I think the takedown in Libya and encouraging that they're in Syria. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, a thousand percent. You're, you're very confused, I man. I, I don't really know who's titrating your your medication, but he's, he should do a better job. I mean, it's the beginning of the month, for God's sakes. Steve, it's early in the month. It's May 4th. Surely your doctor can titrate you up a little bit. I mean, you're, you're, are you off your meds or are you on a low dose? I'm, I'm on with you. No, you must be on a low dose. I mean, it's early in the month. You better titrate it up because you can't follow with thought. Hey. I mean, you, you think you're an intelligent man, but you don't know what you just said. Well, I know what I just said. All right, take a walk. You, you know, you're wasting my airtime and wasting people's minds. You made no sense whatsoever. They're setting people on fire over there. They penetrated 49 or 50 of the states, according to the FBI. They're sitting here with loaded armed, loaded weapons, as we just saw in Texas, ready to strike, waiting for Central Command to tell them the Nazis are here. The Islamo-fascists are in this country. They're armed to the teeth. Period. End of story. You want to blame yourself? You can do it all you want. Go blame yourself all you want. Blame America's foreign policy. Go ahead. That means you don't know anything about history. A thousand years, Muslims have been at war with the world around them. Virtually everywhere on the globe where there is a war, and I don't know of any, diff any area where it's not true, almost every event on this planet where there's a war, a small war or a big war, it's Muslims who can, cannot get along with their neighbor. Do you know that? Good, just look around the world. Show me a war that's not about Muslims not getting along with their neighbor. And ask yourself why. WBAP in Dallas, Joshua, go ahead, you're on the Savage Nation, what's on your mind? Hi, Michael, thanks for having me on. Um, I was actually at the event, and uh, just a, a couple of comments, you, you had some color commentary about the, uh, the FBI dropping their guns, I, I like that. They weren't actually there, though, um, when the shooting took place. Uh, but where, where were they, studying their manual on it, on what they could do and not do? Oh, probably. I don't know. But, uh, they oh, you mean there was FBI there, but they weren't there? Where were they? In a hotel room? Studying a manual on rules of engagement with radical Muslims? Going up until after the shooting. 
Ah, they came there with the body bags and the chalk. Yeah, there was um, the Joint Task Force on Terrorism. and That's a, that's a joke. W were they there with guns drawn? Did they do anything? Or they also dropped the guns out of their girly host holsters? Showed up later. Um, the, the forces that were there, there was some private security, which those guys were actually pretty nice. Yeah, uh, right. Big, beefy Texans who aren't afraid of them. Yeah. And like then, the traffic cop who shot them in the head, despite their body armor. The SWAT team was actually guarding the inside. Uh, I think there were like 10 or 12 guys. Uh, just yeah, did they have weapons that were loaded, or they, well, they also didn't have loaded weapons? Oh, no, they had like machine gun, like uh, AR. Oh, good. Right. They, were ready for, they were ready for the Muslims to come in there. I, I got it. Yeah, but they were uh, protecting Mr. Uh, Vilders and Miss Geller and Mr. Spencer. That's pretty good security. Oh, yeah. Well, no, now you know why I don't give public appearances. <laughs> well... I can't blame you for that. That's, it's a dangerous place out there. All right, so what happened after the shooting? Tell me what happened. What did the FBI do? Uh, well, the FBI uh, didn't meet with us until something like 9 o'clock. Um, they took us to, uh, well, we were in the conference center, and then uh, when the shooting took place, that was around 9.51, 9.52, something like that, because by 7 o'clock they had taken us uh, into another room. And... Um, uh, that was like a, a gymnasium arena kind of place. They took us through a back hallway to get there. Well, you're taking, they took the, the spectators in there to what? Ask you what, what you th were doing there or to see if you were part of the, uh, to see if you were safe or what? Yeah, uh, to, I think just to keep us safe until they had the whole under control. Um, you sure they didn't want to get your names and addresses so they could monitor you for going to the event? Um, no, they already had our names when we arrived, not the, ah. but the, uh, the people that had been holding the event. We gave our IDs. Um, well, that, but, that's uh, interesting. That, that unto itself is worrisome, but go on. So did the FBI treat you as though you were potential victims or you were involved with the perpetrators? Which side were they, which side were they on? Well, I think they were on the right side. They were pretty nice. Um, they just wanted to take statements, and uh, they took statements from people who had heard the gunshots. I heard the gunshots. I, I see. They were just covering their behinds, in other words, about the shooting. Yeah, just... They it, had to send an incident report to the girl at, on above them, the girlie above them in the FBI. The sorority girl who runs their division had to be placated that they didn't do the wrong thing. They are afraid of losing their job or going to jail. But, yeah, um, but yeah the, the police officer who... Uh, or I guess the police officer and the security guard, they were at the north side of, well, I don't know. Yeah, they were out in the lot, and, and they shot them. The minute they came up to them, they came out, the, uh, the, the Muslims came out shooting with their AKs. They shot one of the guys in the foot. The other guy shot him dead with a handgun. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, but the Isn't that good? Isn't that great? No one will identify the traffic cop because he'll become public enemy number one to all the liberals in America. They'll blame him for killing the Muslims without asking them what their, their grievances were. I mean, he probably should have asked them what they, what they were offended by. He should have engaged them in conversation. He should have had a dialogue with them and invited them over the house for tea or coffee and, and discussed Islamophobia. Then maybe this could have been avoided. You get the picture, right? Thanks for the call. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. We're talking about the Muslims who try to shoot up a freedom of speech event in Texas, however offensive, protected by our First Amendment. And you've got idiots here saying that they went too far, they shouldn't have run it, they provoked Muslims, blah, blah, blah. Well, how much of the First Amendment do you want? 40%, 50%, 70%? Do you want the government to determine what the First Amendment should be? Someone sent this to me. Is this something I should read on the air? When Osama bin Laden found himself at the bottom of his watery grave, he looked around and said, 72 sturgeons? It was supposed to be 72 virgins, not sturgeons. Now, is that offensive? I think it's funny. Some might find it offensive. Isn't comedy supposed to be poignant and rather offensive? Let me remind you of something. The First Amendment was written to protect offensive speech because polite speech does not need protection. It is offensive speech that is protected by our First Amendment. This is Michael Savage. Be here or be nowhere.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Well, we all know the story by now, don't we, which is in Garland, Texas. Uh, they held a provocative, admittedly provocative event, draw a cartoon of Muhammad. It was heavily guarded. And just as the event was drawing to a conclusion last night, two Muslims, one a convert from prison, a jailhouse convert, drives up to the, they drove up to the parking lot. And two security officers, one a traffic cop from Texas, immediately confront them. They didn't hide in their car. They didn't uh, call Eric Holder to ask what they should do. They didn't consult a book. Being Texans, they got out of their car and confronted the people in the black car. And the minute they did that, the Muslims in the car came out shooting with automatic weapons, injuring one of the officers in the foot. The other officer, unnamed, shot them both dead with headshots. The FBI had nothing to do with saving the day. The ATF was there. They did nothing. We don't know whether they were consulting their manuals on rules of engagement, whether they were calling home for uh, an EEOC manual on what they can do, what they couldn't do. We know that one Texas traffic cop killed the Muslims who were trying to shoot everyone up. And now today is the aftermath. The snowstorm came, blew through America, and today is the cleanup. So you've got the liberals taking the viewpoint. That, yeah, well, I believe in the First Amendment, but not really. You know, there's a limit to the First Amendment. You, you know, you, you can only do so much. You can't say anything about Islam. Now, yes, you could put Jesus in a jar. Yes, I don't mind that. I mean, in the 60s, why? I remember at the Brooklyn College when the uh, when they ran a, a Jesus, a piss Jesus art show. I didn't, I found it a fool. But Christians didn't go in with automatic weapons and shoot up the Brooklyn Museum. Because they're civilized people. So it's a different story now. You're living in a different world. Someone sends me this joke. It's one line. Two lines. When Osama bin Laden found himself at the bottom of his watery grave, he looked around and said, 72 sturgeons? It was supposed to be 72 virgins, not sturgeons. Now, is that funny? Is it offensive? Should it be banned? Should this kind of humor be banned? I mean, think about what I'm saying to you. Who's going to decide what should be banned? We understand you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. I know my limitations on radio. I don't yell fire in a crowded theater. I never call for anyone's death. I know the rules. But we also know the great limits uh, on freedom of speech that existed in fascist dictatorships as it ex exists in the Castro's Cuba. There's no free speech in, <clears throat> in Cuba. There's no free speech in China. You know that. Sorry, I got a peanut caught in my throat. So which side are you on? 855-400-7282 is the phone number. We're talking about that event. We're talking about the fact that after Obama and Holder got through provoking the mobs in the streets, cops are dying now. A cop in New York was shot in the face and died hours ago. All because Obama and Holder have stirred up the streets against the cops. And here we are. Now we have the Muslim attack. One of them said in his tweet, the bro with me and myself have given ba'aya to Amaral Muhammadin. Well, mumbo jumbo. May Allah accept this as Mujahideen. Yeah, all right. You know, find out if they got sturgeon or virgins. We don't know yet. But the controversy now is provoking idiots in the media like CNN's uh, talking face to attack the woman who held the event. Listen to clip number one in the Savage Nation. I don't want to play a, a semantics game with you, but I do think that your critics have a point when they say that you paint with a broad brush stroke and it sounds like you're anti -Islam. No, you paint with a broad brush. You paint with a brush. I yeah. am anti-Jihad. I am anti-Sharia. You, by saying I paint with a broad brush, are saying all Muslims support Jihad. And Allison, you sound very Islamophobic. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going on right now. Two sides of the story. Of course, there's really only one side. The event was perfectly legal. Some didn't like it. It's too damn bad. 
Let them move back to an area where they don't do that. You don't want to see pictures of Muhammad in a cartoon? Then move to some hellhole like Yemen. Go ahead, move to Yemen. What are you bothering us with your, th your throwback views of the world? We don't live in Yemen. We don't want to be dragged into the ninth century. That's what America should be saying. That's what Pamela Geller said with her American Freedom Defense Initiatives uh, contest, the Muhammad Art exhibit. Offensive, yes. Provocative, yes. But it showed you the kind of enemies we are facing that are hidden here in this country right now, ready to strike. <clears throat> this morning, I was on the Alex Jones show. Alex Jones is a real warrior of the truth. He's been castigated by Fox News and the Rush Cartel, as have I. Alex Jones has always been uh, a burr in their saddle and a thorn in their side because he made it without them. In plain English, he's, a, he's an independent as I am. He had me on to discuss my new novel, Countdown to Mecca, but immediately, the minute I arrived at his show, well, listen to what happened. Let's hear it. I want to get into his new book, Michael Savage, Countdown to Mecca. I know his previous book, Openly Criticizing China and Their Power Grabs, got censored. So it looks to me like, as I've already started reading, it's just excellent that he's basically putting what he thinks is going to happen into a novel. We'll see if I'm correct in a moment, but you need to get it from the multi-time number one New York Times bestseller. Find it at Amazon.com, WND.com, you name it. Michael Savage, Countdown to Mecca. Uh, but so much to get into today, sir. Great to have you with us. What do you make of the situation that just unfolded uh, up in Garland and the response to saying the First Amendment is to blame and, and, and nothing about the shooters that shot the cop? Alex, the thing is this, we've been penetrated, we've been infiltrated. How high up it goes is anyone's guess. We know that the president's middle name is not Jesus. We know that the military has been told to stand down. We know the police have been told to stand down. We know that there's only one sacred religion in the United States of America, and it isn't the founding religion. It's the invasive religion. And the fact of the matter is, the FBI director who warned us Six weeks ago, this was just before Hussein's uh, conference, anti-terrorism, counter-terrorism conference in Washington, where he invited Muslim groups. <clears throat> he disinvited the head of the FBI who said that ISIS is in 49 out of the 50 states. Why would he do that to the head of the FBI who warned us? There's is only one answer. Someone in that team in the White House is playing for the other side. They're not on our side. What can I say to you that you don't already know, Alex? We know we're at war. They've been at war with us for a thousand years. The president has been, been, been at war with America for the time he, uh, I guess, what, left Colombia and discovered his Afro roots? When he was a kid, he didn't identify with this radical side. Read his own autobiography. All right, so that, that's then he found a little bit of the interview on the Alex Jones show. It was really good. Alex stimulates me because he's so brave. And he's been fighting the battle for so long, and that's why he's hated by the Rush Cartel and others at Fox News, as am I. I want to read you a paragraph from Countdown to Mecca because it's so on target, it's frightening. There's an argument now between some of the generals making the plot, and one of them says this. I visited the Hagia Sophia yesterday and saw how the Muslims desecrated the murals of Christ and the Virgin. Disgusting. People should have a look at that. Maybe we wouldn't hear so much propaganda about Islam as a religion of peace. General Brooks says, are you kidding? The average guy wouldn't believe it. They've been brainwashed into hating the religion of their own fathers. Maybe you should buy it. Not for sale, chuckled Sucliffe. Not yet anyway, or I would. And this is the story. And then the next general says, this has been a war of attrition, a war spanning millennium, said Sucliffe. I guess we can wait a little longer. So that's a little bit of what's going on in the novel, and I had to go to a fictional format to get my opinions across because some of the opinions expressed on this show are not quite as extreme as you may think. But in fiction, you can kind of go a little further. You get it? That's why I wrote Countdown to Mecca, the third in the trilogy of the Jack Hatfield novels. Let's take your calls now on this event in Texas and all the latest news that emerges here on the show. KSFO in San Francisco. Robert, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hey, I love the First Amendment, but um, with great uh, res responsibility with it, um, you can't say things like fire in a movie theater because it causes a panic, hurts That's people. Right. That's right. You can't scream. No, you cannot scream fire in a crowded movie theater. That is correct. And it's one of so, so what does that have to do with the Muhammad cartoon contest? 
Well, it's about keeping people safe because the reason why the fire in a movie theater is because the film went through chemicals that were highly flammable in front of an open filament. The chance of the whole theater burning down was great, and people would stampede out, and people would die. So, right, so what's the point, though? What, because we have a few Muslims in America, we have to now bend ourselves to Sharia law? To, to save... Well, what if I started talking about Kevin Klein Live on your show? You'd probably cut me right off. I don't know who you're... Oh, wait, who are you talking about? Who is that? It's, it's a local show on Live. You're trying to just inject something that has nothing to do with the discussion. What what percent of the First Amendment would you permit to be operative? 50%, 80%, 90%, what percent? The percent where it starts to hurt your own people. So what is that percent? Who will decide it? You, the federal government? Who will make that decision? The ACLU? Who will decide what is permissible under the First Amendment and what is not permissible? Tell me who makes that decision. Whoever's running the event that has the thing. So if you're Also oh, any so Pamela made the decision. Pamela Geller made the decision that she wanted to run a Draw the Prophet Muhammad cartoon event. Right. I mean, because she's the one who put people in danger. I mean, she needs to offer proper protection. Well, she did offer proper protection. The Muslims were shot dead. That should tell you that she offered proper protection. So our people weren't hurt, so then it's okay. Right. Maybe the, maybe the next group of uh, brave warriors will think twice with their body armor and their AKs. Maybe they'll realize they could have their heads blown off by a sheriff. Maybe they won't be so quick to shoot people like sheep at Fort Hood because they were unarmed. They're dealing with Texans there, not Californians and San Francisco. Sir, stop talking about a host we never heard of. It's just a plug for a local show. I never heard of him. And he's just trying to provoke me into saying something. I don't even know who he's talking about. He didn't make his point. But he, he got on the air. Why? Because I believe in freedom of speech, and I thought he was going to have a rational argument with me. Okay, what do you want to talk about? That's the issue. Let's take one more caller, open up one more line, WMAL in Washington, D.C. Chuck, go ahead, please. You know, Michael, you're really, really upsetting me. Uh, that poor kid that got shot. If we had had some government programs, if we would invest our money in some government programs to educate these people that convert, we might not have had this problem. Oh, here we go again. It's our fault that he became a Muslim. I'm just pulling your leg. I think that cop should be given a medal, to be honest. Well, okay, I understand. I mean, he worked in a dental office, the Muslim, the brave Muslim with body armor and a machine gun. The cop, the Texas cop, had a handgun and was able to shoot him in the head. Two of them. With, with, with the machine guns, Chuck, that guy should be a national hero. If we had a legitimate president, he'd be invited to the White House and talked about as a role model instead of some sicko from the gutters. I'm speaking to you as a combat veteran. You know, whether I agree with what you have to say or not, I will fight to the death for your right to say it. You're hired. You're hired. You are hired. You are hired. You are hired, and I'm giving you a gift right away because I want you to fly out to San Francisco to protect me. I'm sending you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca. Gorgeous book, the third in the trilogy. Everyone who bought the other two better buy this one because it's the last one. People say, oh, come on, you're kidding me. You're really going to write another? Nope. They're too hard. Won't do it. No more. No more. That's it. It's the third in the Jack Hatfield trilogy. Okay, one caveat. One caveat. If in my lifetime... I see a movie made by Hollywood based on my first two novels or the third where they take me off the blacklist created by Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and Spielberg and Weinstein. If Hollywood produces one of the novels as a movie, I'll consider doing a fourth. But I doubt that's going to happen. I'd rather just paint watercolors, give out scholarships to deserving poor children who want to go to college and what it means to be an American contest for the rest of my life and try to do some other good things. I, I've come up with other things I want to do. I'm not going to write anymore like that. I can't do it. But let's stick to today's show. Texas, Muslims, machine guns, body armor. They tried to shoot up a free speech event, however offensive, and instead they went to Allah land because a Texas, uh, a traffic cop in Texas blew their heads out off with the body armor. Let's hear it for Texas traffic cops. I'll be right back. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So what people are saying is that there's always this fine line, you know, between freedom of speech and being um, intentionally incendiary and provocative. Intentionally incendiary and provocative by drawing a cartoon. This is the low state of freedom of speech in this country. Then you have filth on television attacking Christians on a daily basis. I can name one movie after another that's ripped Christianity and Christians mock them for decades from the Weinsteins of Hollywood and the Larry Davids. You want me to tell you about them? I find them so offensive it makes me sick, but I don't go shoot anybody over it. I stop watching their filth. That's what I do. I don't shoot people up because I come from the United States of America, the most civilized nation on the planet. One of the shooters, this guy Simpson, uh, said he was tired of living on the non-Muslims. Can you believe this? He said he was tired of living on the non-Muslims, according to a federal document, stemming from his January 2010 indictment on charge of lying to an FBI agent. He said, I'm tired of living on the non-Muslims. And he said that non-Muslims are fighting against Allah and that his money and taxes are going towards their weapons. Now, where did he get this filth in his head from? Who put this garbage in his head, this dental assistant? Imagine he was cleaning teeth, worked in a dental office cleaning teeth. Could you imagine all the while his mind was swirling with hatred against America, against white people? Can you imagine what's going on in this country? It's all coming up like a pus. Obama has opened up a, a, a wound that was somewhat healed, almost healed, and now pus is coming out. Maybe in the long run it'll be a better nation. Maybe it'll be a worse nation. Maybe there'll be no nation. We know that Obama, the most incompetent surgeon in the history of the presidency, has set off a race war in America. And we also know that it's only going to get worse, not better. That's according to the latest poll. Most Americans think a race war is occurring right now because of Obama and Holder. And Sharpton and the other racial provocateurs. Is that hate speech? Is what Barack Obama has been doing not hate speech? Attacking cops? Attacking white cops? Isn't that hate speech? He did it perfectly legitimately. He didn't do it in German. He didn't do it with the Horst Vessel song playing behind him. He did it like a smooth delivery. Because he's a smooth deliverer of hatred and such. Obama delivers hate speech every day. Al Sharpton delivers hate speech every day. Should they be banned? Who do you want to ban next? Al Sharpton, Barack Obama, Eric Holder? Who do you want to ban next? Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. So one of the shooters, one of the Muslim converts there was... uh, he was on a government no-fly list. They knew who he was. The FBI knew who he was. He was probably a double agent or something. And he went off, that's all. He went off the grid. So, uh, Muhammad art exhibit and contest. Provocative, yes. Offensive, yes. But we live in America. We don't live in Yemen. And provocation, provocation and offense is part of the culture of America, is it not? Look what Harvey Weinstein produces. Look what Sean Penn does in his movies. They're, they're offensive movies to most of us. We don't burn theaters down because of what Weinstein produces. Do we burn theaters down because Weinstein attacks Christians in movies, making a mockery of people with crosses and turning everyone who goes to church into some kind of moron? We don't burn theaters down. We just don't go to the movie. Now, depictions of the Prophet Muhammad are another story to the liberal because they are, oh, they know the law. That they know. Oh, that's considered offensive in Islam. That's provocative. So what about Christians? Well, they don't kill, so we can provoke them. That's all. That's, That's the whole story. So there's the story in a nutshell, and the hero here is the cop, the traffic cop. Shot him dead in the head. Dead in the head. It wasn't the FBI who saved the attendees. It wasn't the ATF. It wasn't the Homeland Security. They did nothing. Nothing. They were there to t- taking pictures of everyone who attended to see if they'd get him on a watch list. Texas traffic cop. All I can tell you is if you're driving through Texas, you better obey the traffic cops if they pull you over and ask you for your license. One thing you'll know now is that uh, the Muhammad, the Mujahideen are not going to use Texas as a, a testing ground for a probe. They're not going to try it again. They might, you know, they might actually go get the sturgeon this time instead of the virgin. They may find themselves swimming with the fishes. 
Anyway, that's the story. It's actually, a, you know, it's an interesting story, and it's very good. It's actually good to this story. This is actually the first time, I think, that I've seen these brave Muslims with body armor this time and AKs come out shooting and get, and get killed. Can you imagine if Clinton had not disarmed our troops at Fort Hood? Could you imagine if the troops all had weapons when uh, the major, the Muslim major in Dal Hassan went on a shooting spree and reloaded and reloaded and shot 13, killed, killed 13, injured something like 50 some odd people? Imagine if Clinton had not disarmed our troops on bases and they had had weapons, they could have killed the Muslim major, who was still alive, by the way. Timothy McVeigh was executed within two years, I think, or two and a half, less than that. The Muslim major is being protected by the powers that be. Why? Why haven't they executed Muslim Major Nidal Hassan? Why hasn't he been executed yet? Well, you tell me. But anyway, that's a sideshow. Gunman at an anti-Islam event fired an unarmed security officer. No kidding, with a machine gun. But the traffic cop was so quick, he pulled out his handgun and killed both of them. Headshots. Headshots. Now, you know the FBI is going to investigate the traffic cop. Yeah, oh, yeah, I have to investigate him. How could he do his job so well without consulting a, a Barack... Why didn't he call? I want to know why that traffic cop did not call the White House to find out if he could kill the, uh, the men with machine guns. Maybe they were just uh, law-abiding citizens shooting off their guns for an event, some kind of holiday. Maybe they just wanted to hear sound. It was like fireworks in their culture. They could have used the cultural of, hey, wait a minute. You see, we have it all wrong. The Muslims with body armor and AKs, they may not have even been going to the event to shoot anybody. They could have been good Muslims going there to defend Pamela Geller. And they were trying to warn away other Mujahideen who were hiding in the bushes. And this gun-crazy Texan shot them. So there could be a case against them. If you're Barack Obama or Al Sharpton, this could be a case of, uh, of racism. Because I'm pretty sure the traffic cop was white and the poor Muslim was not white. I'm pretty sure he was an African-American convert to Islam. This is definitely a case for the uh, Justice Department to look into. Sean on WMAL, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yeah, thank you, Michael. I just uh, had a comment on the, uh, the shooting in Texas. I would have to agree with this, that let's not do that. I mean, we, like you always say, what do we know? We know that doing the depiction of Muhammad is super offensive to these people. And you know it's going to incite violence. And I, just, I don't see the reason why they even, why they even have the contest. I understand they were maybe giving out... Well, let me ask you something, Sean. You sound like a young man who's been brainwashed in a university. Do you remember years ago when there was a Skokie march of American Nazis through a Jewish community? The ACLU defended the Nazis. Do you know that? Okay. No, I, I can't say that I did know no, that. Uh, why, why did the ACLU defend the Nazis? Why did they let the Nazis march through Skokie, Illinois? Well, but, uh, I'm, look, I'm, I'm not saying that's a good thing, but I'm saying... Do, do, well, I'm not yes. saying it's a good thing either, but the ACLU defended the Nazis' right to provoke Jews. They said it's offensive, but it's freedom of speech. Fair enough. I understand that, but all, we know ACLU is a complete joke, right? We know all they do is... Well, it like, doesn't matter, but they have a point, which is where do we draw the line in free speech, which is what we're talking about on the ra on the radio today, Sean. Where is the line? Look, I, look I, like, like the man said before, the gentleman said before, you know, he will fight to the death to the, defend the ability for you to say what you feel. But again, if you go around saying offensive things to people all day long and someone punches you in the mouth, well, you kind of... That's right. That's right. That's why they had security. And they got punched in the head first. Those who would, those who would have stopped the event got, got killed. Because they wanted to kill everybody in that auditorium, didn't they? For, for Allah, didn't they say that? They were tired of living under a non-Muslim uh, nation and this and that, and they wanted to go to heaven? Well, they got what they wished for. No, absolutely. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm in complete agreement with you there. But in 1977, the leader of the National Socialist Party of America in Skokie, Illinois, announced that the party intended to march through Skokie, Illinois, in the predominantly Jewish community, uh, where one in six residents was a Holocaust survivor. Now, the, the National Socialist Party, the American Nazi Party, did march. And take a guess who defended them, the ACLU. The ACLU challenged an injunction which said they shouldn't march because it'll be offensive to the Jews. The ACLU challenged the injunction issued by the Circuit Court of Cook County, Illinois, that prohibited marchers at the proposed Skokie rally from wearing Nazi uniforms or displaying swastikas. The Jews in the ACLU, represented by civil rights attorney Burton Joseph, another Jewish man, argued in favor of the Nazis to wear a Nazi uniform. Why? The challengers argued that the injunction violated the First 
Amendment rights of the marchers to express themselves. So now that's where we are today. That's where we are today. So now Pamela Geller holds this event on Muhammad. She is legally able to do so. It's, it's as simple as that. She was able to do it. It's that simple. What the end game was for that? Do we know? Like, I understand they were giving. Well, now you're asking another question. Did she want to provoke violence to show the world what mu it, some Muslims are capable of? Is that what she wanted to do? I don't know. Did she? I, mean, I don't know. I don't know the woman. I've never had her on my show. I find her too too provocative for my show. Probably a good call. But I but I respect her. I mean, I, she she's a little too provocative for me, but she has every right to be as provocative as she wishes. So now she's gotten uh, maybe the results that she wanted. I don't really know what she wanted. Uh, I, I understand. And but I here's the thing is, you see, Sean, I don't want anyone telling me what I know myself to be the limits of my free speech. I know what they are. I don't provoke people into violence. I never call for anyone's death. Never. That's how I've been able to survive radio for 21 years. So I know my limits, and I, and I observe them very carefully. I know my responsibilities as a broadcaster to America and the world, and I respect them. However, I don't want some government bureaucrat to tell me what my limits should be. I know what they are. No, no, do you want them to close down websites that have news that they don't agree with? Of course you don't. Do you, Sean? Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. I like to get all sides of the story. I just know, like, my mother and... Did, did, what about pornography? Why is pornography so pervasive in America? Because one filthy, dirty, dirtbag of the lowest order, who now supports Hillary Clinton, was shot in the groin uh, by an angry resident, I forget his name, some real filthy, he, he published Penthouse, I don't know his name. He had a lawyer argue before the Supreme Court that pornography is not pornography. Even though it may be offensive, it's protected by the First Amendment. So now we have pornography in every neighborhood, in every household, in every store, in every brain. We have porno around the clock because of that filthy, disgusting degenerate who was shot in the groin, Larry, Larry Flint. That, degener that degenerate, Larry Flint, hired a silk-smooth lawyer who argued that pornography was not pornography and it should be permitted because it's a, a First Amendment protected f a freedom of expression. It's artistic. It's artistic. So now we have porno everywhere. So, in other words, where are the limits of free speech? I'll let you decide. I can't decide it for you. No, no and again, I would agree with you. Again, I'm not arguing whether, you, whether, you, whether someone should tell you whether to do it or not, but I think common sense would tell you not to do something. You know that's going to incite violence. Well, I wouldn't hold such an event. If you're asking me, would I hold a Draw Muhammad contest? No, I'm not, I wouldn't do that. But she did. She's a provocateur. Okay. But apparently she was, she was within her rights to be so. Isn't there a dirty, filthy comedian of the lowest order who never should have been born, a guy named C.K. something who's now held up as a role model, even though he's one of the filthiest minds on the planet, a, a sick filth that is now a, a star-studded uh, member of the Hollywood community. He gets up there and says things that make me blush, and I've heard everything. Should he be banned? No, I just don't watch him. I think he's a filthy, disgusting, mentally ill man. Uh, that's what I would say about Pamela Geller. If you don't like what she is doing, then don't attend her events. I wasn't there, but again, I just don't think we should be... So what, are we going to have armed guards and we're going to do stuff like this? Outside? Well, why is it the most conservatives who speak need armed guards? Why is it that our, uh, conservatives who don't even provoke Muslims, why do they need armed guards? Why did I have armed guards at all of my live events when I was still giving them, and I had them 20 years ago? When I was doing the compassionate conservative events... Fry him and try, try him and fry him, name him and shame him. I did them all over the Bay Area, the Marin County Civic Center, the Oakland uh, uh, Airport Hilton. I have people who remember those events. I had six to ten uh, guards. I had the Marin Sheriff's Department guarding my parking lot. Why? Because liberals are hateful fascists, and they didn't like my patriotic themes. They hate the flag. They hate the country. That to them is offensive. But I still held the events then. So what should I have done? Not speak? Should I not get up every day and do my radio show? There are people who don't like what I say on this show on a daily basis. What should I do, Sean? Not speak? No, no, absolutely not. We love when you speak. We all listen. But again, like I said, you don't come in. Like you just, you just said not that long ago. I don't do things that you know are... You wouldn't hold that type of event. Why? Because, you know, people don't want to see that. For what? Again, it's... All right, right, so you're saying she, your, your opinion is she went too far. far. Well, can, look at Charlie Hebdo. Same thing happened, right? Okay, we don't learn from our... Not to say that... We, oh, you mean they deserve to get killed because they they did a cartoon cover of, of, of Muhammad? Absolutely not. No, no, of course not. But look what happened. 
Well, look what happened. What should have happened is that the French should have protected them and they should have killed the Muslims first. They should have shot them like the dead rats they are in the street, like they did in Texas. Then you wouldn't have Muslims acting up like this if more of them were shot when they came like big brave men with body armor and machine guns. But they did it in Paris where the people were unarmed and they weren't quick on the draw like they are in Texas. I guarantee you the next uh, terror attack in this country is not going to happen in Texas. I guarantee you they're not so quick to want to go see the sturgeon that they're going to do it in Texas. All right, let me send you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca. Now, the title of that book is very provocative, isn't it? I actually thought about it. I want you to think about my novel. Think about how provocative my novel is. This could be seen as provocative, couldn't it? Countdown to Mecca. In fact, my publisher argued with me for a long time and said, you can't publish that title. I said, but that's the essence of the book. <clears throat> the book is actually about someone who tries to stop the attack on Mecca. But I can guarantee you as I'm sitting here, the Salenterites on the left are going to say, oh, Savage is calling for blowing up Mecca. Because they won't read the book. They typecast me, all the George Soros gangsters, the criminals working for the criminal tax evader, uh, all attack me on a daily basis. That's why he spread, spreads his money around. He uses the left to attack the conservatives because we're the only ones who know what the criminals are really doing. And because we are brave enough to speak out against criminals who evade taxes with double Dutch this, double Irish that, they attack us on a daily basis. It's all about the money at the end of the day. Okay, there's other news, but I'm not going to talk about it because I think this is the only subject that's worthy of discussion today. It's a huge event, and the reason we're talking about it, you know why this is such a big event? Because the Muslims got killed. Do you realize that if those Muslims who are dead now with the sturgeon, if they had been successful in their desire to shoot up the event, do you think that there would be as much controversy today? There wouldn't. Not at all, because you've come to expect violence from a certain segment of the population, haven't you? They've actually conditioned you into accepting their violence. But this time they were foiled by a lone Texas traffic cop who shot their brains out, even though they were wearing body armor and they had AK-47s. Do you know that? I'd like to know who's behind them. I want to know what mosque they attended. I want to know what mosque they went to in Arizona. I want to know where the Council on Islamic American uh, Hate Relations is today. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. <laughs> Pamela Geller is um, a heroine. She's the real Martha Washington of our time, not that phony blonde on Fox News. I want you to go back in time. There were always people who dared stand up and do offensive things in order to attract attention to something that was even more offensive. Sharia law is what she fears, not Muslims. And she wants to awaken you to the hatred that exists within the Muslim community. And if more of us were like Pamela Geller, eventually we could have more freedom in this country. I'll give you another example. I go to a few Italian restaurants in San Francisco. I go to the North Beach restaurant. I go to Pinocchio. I occasionally like to eat ham in the form of prosciutto, right? Do you want to live in a world where a few Muslims tell you that you can't even have ham anymore? Well, it's going on in this country. Some school districts have said, shh, don't, don't offend the Muslims. Oh, oh they, they don't like ham. Take it off the menu. Oh, we better take the ham off. And just take some ham off it. So it's the liberals, eh, it's just ham. I don't, what do I care about ham? I'm a vegan anyway. First they came for the ham, and I did not raise my voice because I am not a pig. You know what I'm saying. When they came for the ham, I didn't raise my voice because I was a vegan. I didn't eat ham. And, I mean, where do you want this to go? Where do you want it to end? Screw them all. They don't like it here. Let them go live in Yemen. That's what I say. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. You don't like America. Get the hell out of the country. Okay, take your throwback religion with you if you don't like it. Don't try to change this country to what it will never be. More of us are like that Texas traffic cop than you may imagine. We're not all Woody Allen. We're not all Larry David. So the fact of the matter is that's what just happened. Some people think that way. Pamela Geller wanted to provoke, to show you how hateful some of them can be. And they're dead. 
They expressed their rights to free speech. They used an AK-47. The traffic cop expressed his right to free speech. He used a handgun. Guess who won? The traffic cop. He shot him in the head with their body armor. That's the whole story. You don't like it, he'll leave. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. Bye. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. You brag a bit more about your officer here. I mean, I think the scenario is two guys with assault rifles who may be wearing protective gear up against one officer with a service pistol. Fair to say he did a hell of a job last night. He did, he, he did what he was trained to do. And under the fire that uh, he was put under, he did a very good job and probably saved. I want you to put your hand on your heart wherever you are and listen to this. This is not Jamie Foxx mocking uh, the national anthem. This is Michael Savage saluting the national anthem. Because this story is like the Alamo. This is the beginning of the fight back against Islamists and against the, sl the Islamization of America. It's a fight against Sharia law. That's what Pamela Geller wanted to happen, and it happened. Go ahead, play it louder. It's almost done. Liberals now want to put limits on free speech. Liberals are saying, well, she provoked them. She had no right to have a, a cartoon contest. These are the same liberals who defend pornography in the kindergarten class. These are the same liberals who have your sons come in and cross-dress in the third grade. These are the same liberals who pushed free speech to a point of no return. Now suddenly they want Pamela Geller not to be able to have a cartoon contest. These are the same liberals who said it's not offensive to put a, a statue of Jesus in a jar of urine as they did at the Brooklyn Museum a number of years ago and snickered when Christians were offended in New York. Well, that's just freedom of speech. <laughs> the head of the Brooklyn Museum said, the little rat with a nice suit and a nice haircut. It's freedom of speech to put Jesus in a, in, in a jar of urine. I guarantee you that head of the Brooklyn Museum uh, is somewhere deep in the bowels of the federal government today. Guarantee you telling you what the limits of your free speech should be, not his. So th look, this is a very, it's a, it's, a, it's a, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, I would say, a seminal situation. What just happened in Texas has many elements to it, which is why we're talking about it. If the Muslims in body armor with AK-47s had shot up the place, it'd be just another act by more mad Muslims somewhere on the earth. And you said, oh, that's terrible, horrible. How many are dead? Oh, that's awful. Let me go on with my day. But you wouldn't have been as provoked as you are today because now the Muslims are dead and now you're mad at Pamela Geller for having had a cartoon contest. See, there's the conundrum. You don't even understand what the conundrum is. I really would like to know who the uh, traffic cop was who in the, in, the, in the midst of fire, these guys jumped out of their car with blazing automatic weapons. They injured his partner in the foot. Who had the presence of mind to draw a handgun and shoot him in the head? This guy has to be a former combat veteran. That's all I can say. And the second thing I'd like to tell you is if you're driving through Texas, obey all traffic laws. It's not Baltimore. And it's not Brooklyn. Just obey all traffic laws if you're in Texas. That's all I can tell you. That's the secondary story. I can guarantee you everyone will be watching that their, uh, their stops, <laughs> the stop signs are not going to go on, on a yellow. <laughs> And that's it. Here we are today talking about this. So right away, the liberals attack Pamela Geller. It's not free speech across the line. We heard, we know how I heard this. You provoked them, got what you deserved. You provoked anti-Islamic sentiment. That's the CNN version. That's also, I think Fox News took that uh, that position. Didn't Martha Washington already take that position? That she provoked them? Sure. She had a new dye job, and she gave, her, gave a statement that Pamela Geller is the problem, not the solution. So here we are. We're talking about it. If you'd like to join in the conversation and be heard by more people than you meet for the rest of your life, 855 but don't do it because we're sold out. Oh, we have one open line. 
WMAL in Washington, D.C. Brian, go ahead. You're up in the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? How you doing, Dr. Savage? Thanks for taking my call. I wanted to comment on your previous caller. I actually think he was asking the wrong question. He was asking, why would you have an event of that nature? In this country, to me, that seems kind of outrageous that you need to ask that question. I think the question he should be asking is, why would having an event like that call someone to want to go pick up AK-47s and come out and shoot a, a bunch of people? That, that's the more outrageous part of it. Now, of I, course. I, what, what kind of religion, what kind of religion teaches this kind of behavior is the real question. And how many more of them are waiting to go on a rampage because of what they're hearing in the mosques? That's the real question, is it not? Absolutely. That is I mean, why, why are the imams not instructed by the federal government that you're not in Yemen anymore? Okay, and in America, we're allowed to do these things. And you better tell your, your congregants to calm down. Get, get the imams into an FBI center and teach them what's allowed in America. Guess we're not living in Yemen. That is Thank you. I'm going to send you a free copy of Countdown in Mecca out next week. CNN just reported that members of the mosque that the Muslim Simpson once regularly attended, the Islamic Community Center of Phoenix, are in shock about what happened. They're just in shock, according to its president, Osama Shami. Osama Shami is shocked. You see, the shooter, who's now sleeping with the fishes, was a regular worshiper at the mosque until around 2010 or 2011. And they said he offered no signal that he held radical views, according to uh, Osama Shami. He was a gentle person, said Osama Shami. He always had a good attitude, a good demeanor. Well, because he was around his brethren. But he also said he went on a rampage because he didn't want to live in a non-Muslim nation. So instead of moving to Yemen or other denizen of freedom, he decided to shoot up a free speech event. No matter how offensive, Muhammad drawing contest is offensive to many, but it's allowed in America, which is why they were allowed to hold it. If it wasn't allowed, they wouldn't have been able to hold it. Hold it. Do you understand that? But that's not the question. You're saying, yeah, it's allowed, but it should be allowed. Should it be allowed? Should Pamela Geller be arrested for this? That's what you want. That's what you really want. You want Pamela Geller, who held the event, to be arrested. You don't like freedom of speech when it violates your liberal protocols, do you? Pornography? That's fine. Harvey Weinstein's violence in every other movie? That's fine. Sean Penn's double-talking hypocrisy? Anti-gun, but every movie he's either killing someone or cutting him up with an axe? That's, that's free speech. But when a woman like Pamela Geller says, okay, let's see what they're really made of, and she holds a uh, cartoon contest on Mohammed, and then the uh, Muslim nuts go crazy, these two. That's her fault, not theirs. That's why we're talking about it. WABC, New York City calls. Will, go ahead, you're up on the Savage Nation. Make your point. You know, it, what's happening here is a coup, okay? By, I don't even want to say any more Islamic radicals or Muslim radicals, in my mind, and of millions of conversations almost, maybe embellishing a little bit, but at least thousands of conversations I've had with Muslims, you're either two types of Muslim. One, obviously a terrorist, okay? Two, a terrorist sympathizer. And that's the issue I get when I talk to another Muslim, when they talk about blowing up the infidels, when they talk about blowing up Israel. Well, I don't condone terrorism, but I can understand. And yeah, yeah, I heard that from all the radicals about Baltimore. That's what all the white liberals are saying. Well, well I don't condone burning Baltimore, but, but you can see the grievances that the, uh, that the, the disenfranchised youth had have any problems i mean listen obviously what's going on in baltimore is crazy but the bottom line is they were talking about well it's incendiary incendiary is what america is based on Pro do you know that the national anthem is now considered incendiary to muslims at colleges around america did you know that did you know that the movie american sniper was banned in michigan because a few muslims a few hateful throwbacks said that the movie offended them do you know that can I ask you a question? You know, the greatest thing that ever happened to this country when we signed the Declaration of Independence, you don't believe that that was incendiary to people that were here that were saying, hey, God save the king. I'm British. And now, you know, you make a good point. It was very incendiary to the British uh, overlords, and I'm sure 30% of Americans said don't provoke the crown. And what happens is we have things in this country called... Ooh, 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 don't provoke the crown. Don't don't mock the queen. They're liable to get mad. We're doing real good now. 
Exactly, and what we do is we provoke debate, and debate is how we handle things in this nation. You're not going to Islamatize my nation and have women not be able to speak and stone gays to death. The same people that are defending these people's coup of America are the very people that they'll kill first. You, you don't have anyone disagreeing with you from my side, I'll tell you that. I see it for what it is. The very liberals who defend the Islamists are the ones who will be knocked off first, is, is what you're saying. Uh, what I'm saying is, what makes me laugh more than anything... No, I, I, I get it, Will. I know what you're saying. I do this for a living on a daily basis. I see the truth. But unlike God, I don't wait. See, God sees the truth but waits. I see the truth, and I don't wait. I speak. I speak, therefore I am. I write, therefore I am. I send you a copy of my novel, Countdown to Mecca, therefore you am. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. See, America is uh, a nation founded on provocation. And the day we cease to provoke is the day we cease to be Americans. <clears throat> provoke, to stimulate or give rise to a reaction or emotion, typically a strong or unwelcome one. To arouse, produce, evoke, cause, elicit, induce, excite. Instigate, precipitate, trigger. That's what pro provocations do. But the reason we are Americans and not Chinese is that we're allowed to do that. So you have filthy, dirty, degenerate comedians like the CK guy who gets up and says the most vile things imaginable. And as a result, idiots in the audience pay, pay to hear more of this filth, right? You have Larry Flint with filthy magazines made a fortune. He can provoke all he wants. And so now we have it in the religious field. Now it's been going on a long time where uh, Hollywood's been provoking Christians for a very long time. In recent memory, I can tell you a Larry David segment where he makes a mockery of a cross where he actually pees on it. A picture of Jesus in a bathroom. Christians didn't burn down Larry David's condominium or apartment because Christianity is a religion of peace. And the Christians have been taught that when someone offends you, you turn the other cheek. Muslims apparently haven't gone through that yet. They're still living in the ninth century. They think it's their right to, to, to shoot people up if they draw a picture of, a, of a, a Muhammad in a cartoon. Well, they got to learn what country they're living in. They're not living in Yemen. They're not living in the ninth century. They need to live in the century they're living in, in the nation they're living in. And if they don't like it and they can't adapt to the laws of the land, they're welcome to go elsewhere. That's the right reaction, not to attack Pamela Geller. You can say she's a provocateur, which she is. Would I have run such an event? No. But she did. She had a right to do it. If, she, if it was not legal to do so, she wouldn't have been able to do it. And so, therefore, now ask yourself other questions about other riots in the past. How about going back to the gay movement, the Stonewall riots? Gays rioted in the, in, the, in the West Village because they wanted to provoke the society at large, the straight society, into telling them basically that they had a right to live and do it their own way, so they rioted. Was that legal? I don't know. It happened. It happened, and it led to gay rights, didn't it? Well, now Pamela Geller is leading an anti-Sharia revolution in America, and it may lead to the betterment of our society. And it may teach our little guests here that we're not going back to the ninth century and we're not moving to Yemen socially. The country will not change like that. That's what it comes down to. And that's why we're arguing over this. KKOH in Reno. Dan, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Make your point. Michael, one side being in the wrong does not put the other side automatically in the right. In this story here, there were no good guys except for that uh, that cop, who I absolutely agree deserves a medal. That, All right, so you, I, you're saying Pamela Geller had no right to run the event? She had every right to do it, but having... Uh, all right, well, we agree to that. We agree to that. She had every right to do it, but you're saying it wasn't wise. It was beyond unwise. It was stupid. It was deliberately provocative for no other reason than for provocation, sweet sake. So you believe that we should kow kowtow and cater to radical Muslims? No. We should, we should all be afraid of them now, and we should suddenly stop drawing cartoons? No, we should not. Absolutely not. Well, wait a minute. You're saying that it provokes them into rage. 
What if everything the left does provokes me into rage? Do I go shoot people up? I don't do that. No. I counter them with my ideas on a daily basis. Maybe the Muslims could learn to counter hatred with wisdom. Maybe they could take some of their Quranic wisdom and give it to us instead of Quranic hatred. Michael, you are a civilized man. Well, then they ought to become civilized or get the hell out of the country. Absolutely. I mean, we, we are more... Why isn't the federal government demanding that imams come in for a training session to teach their flock that they don't live in Yemen in the ninth century? And this is the way America works. However offensive you may find it, swallow it and you have to live with it. Because you don't live in Yemen anymore. And you don't live in the ninth century. You're living in a pluralistic society that believes in these things, no matter how disgusting it may be to you. You cannot use violence to control it. Use some of your Quranic wisdom to control it. Teach the world about the beauty of Islam. Teach the world some of the, the beauty in the Quran. Teach the world about some of the great contributions of Islam. But don't go shoot them up. Why doesn't the federal government hold such a seminar for imams and force them to attend? Uh, I, again, that, that runs in, into making the government step in and do this and that. and that's the Well, when the government steps in every other way, I can guarantee Obama's going to give a speech that uh, while we oppose violence, we find that uh, drawing the, the, the prophet is offensive to Muslims. You know he's going to say that. You know that that's going to be the position of the Justice Department. It's not They're going right. to somehow justify it, just like they justify the riots in Baltimore. You heard that, didn't you? Same thing. While we oppose violence, uh, we understand the, uh, the oppressed minorities in Baltimore and their righteous grievances. Didn't we hear that last week? Michael, this thing about there ought to be a law, the government ought to step in, the government ought to impose this and restrict... I didn't say that, but in this case, we need the government to step in. In the other cases, we don't. This is where government needs to step in. When you have a violent subpopulation in the country, you better get them in a, in a room and teach them what's allowed and what's not allowed. See, that's where we need the government. We don't need them any, anywhere else. Or let's say we don't need them to the extent that they've penetrated every other aspect of society. They need to retrain the imams in America as to what country they're living in and what nation they're living in and what century they're living in. My opinion, I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Kill people. They were stopped in the parking lot by two officers armed with handguns, and immediately the Muslims opened up with the machine guns, wounding one of the cops. The other guy had the presence of mind to shoot both of them dead, shooting them in the head, despite their body armor. So now we're left with the, uh, the carnage afterwards in a discussion, and there's two sides. There are those of you who think we have a right to draw Muhammad if you want and believe it as an important part of freedom of speech. And after this event, they're going to say, you see that? Freedom of speech is under threat by Muslims. That's one side. The other side, the liberals will say that it's an open, unnecessary provocation. But I want to remind you that the First Amendment was written to protect offensive speech, not to protect uh, polite speech and to protect offensive statements in the written form and in the purely artistic form. That's what the First Amendment was created for, not to protect hallmark greeting cards, not to protect political speech that's uh, saccharine. And so that's where we are. We're living in the United States of America. We're not living in a, in a repressive country like Britain where this is not permitted. <clears throat> Do you know that in 06, the U.S. State Department reacted to the Danish cartoon controversy? by saying, well, I supp they support freedom of expression, but, quote, anti-Muslim images are as unacceptable as anti-Semitic images. But they had nothing to say about anti-Christian images. That's, the U.S. State Department never said anything about protecting Christian images. In fact, the opposite is true. The enormous so-called political correctness in this country has led to U.S. universities banning educational materials because some students could find them upsetting. It's led to Muslims, a few radicals, banning, uh, for example, the showing of American Sniper. It's led to universities who have banned the national anthem saying it offended Muslims because they find it uh, uh, militaristic. Where do you want this to end? This nation was founded by religious minorities who felt persecuted in Europe. And we have every right to express ourselves. And if you don't like it, then leave the country. It's that simple. We're not changing because you don't like it. It's that simple. So they published caricatures, and they, they knew it would provoke. I mean, there was no question about it. She knew it would provoke. But let me play a soundbite for you now. 
and ask you if this should be banned as well. Listen to clip number 11. We need the Justice Department to step in and take over policing in this country. In the 20th century, they had to fight states' rights and to get the right to vote. We got to fight states' rights in terms of closing down police cases. Police must be held accountable. All right, so here's a provocateur, one of the worst people in the history of the American political scene, uh, a known rabble-rouser, a known provocateur. He was outside Freddy's Fashion Mart in New York City with a bullhorn egging on people who burned the building to the ground in which people died. Al Sharpton was known to have invented the Tawana Brawley rape case. He's a provocateur, isn't he? Now he's saying police need to be taken over by the federal government. I find it remarkably unconstitutional and offensive, but I'm not a violent man. I'll counter it with reason. I'll counter it with opinion. I'll counter it with speech. That's what we do in America. We don't live in Al Sharpton's world of violence and threats. We live in our world of uh, freedom of speech. So we counter his vile stupidity with uh, reason and with speech. That's what we do in America. And we have survived vermin like him before. The country has survived rabble rousers. The country has survived provocateurs. And we must not lose our heads and in so doing, lose our nation. It's that simple. The good thing that came out of this is a few good things. One, we learned that there are many Muslims in this country. As we were told by the FBI six weeks ago, they're in all 50 states. He said 49, actually. And they're ready to strike. There are cells all over the country. We learned that there are cells all over the country. Right after he gave that speech, Obama banned the FBI director from the White House's anti-terrorism uh, conference. Instead, he had Muslims there. That shows you who Obama is and what side he's on. But nevertheless, the FBI director warned us this would happen, and it just happened. And by the way, who stopped him? Was it the FBI armed to the teeth? No. Was it the, the, the um, D, D, DHS? No. Nothing. Zero. ATF? Nothing. They're only good for arresting white women who go through a red light or putting you in jail if you uh, protest something a, a little too loudly. But they didn't stop the Muslims in the car. They got there. Who stopped them? Two off-duty officers, uh, uh, an off-duty Texas uh, traffic officer shot him in the head. Could you imagine the presence of mind of that, of that traffic officer? Machine guns are blazing at you. Your partner shot in the foot, and you have the presence of mind to pull your gun, aim your gun, take careful aim, fire's coming at you, not blink, shoot him in the head, both of them, and kill them? That guy, if we lived in a legitimate, if we had a legitimate president, would be in the White House. Hey, if I was in charge, I'd have him in the White House tonight, holding him up as a role model, saying this is America. This is a real American hero. And more of you need to learn how to use guns to defend yourself against the enemy within. That's what should be going on today. Instead, oh, he was bad. Pamela Geller's bad. You provoked him, blah, blah, blah. We get that. So this is a very good topic today. And uh, free speech is the issue, and I know an awful lot about it. Because despite what you hear from the Rush cartel, I am the only member of the American media banned from entering Britain for things I allegedly said. And no one has come to my aid. Not one of the Rush cartel ever came to my aid. In fact, some of them attacked me. And they pose as a freedom and constitutionalist. Meanwhile, they attacked me and said I deserved it. If you could believe this. Just check your history. You'll find out that I'm telling you the truth. So I'm not playing the martyr. I'm just telling you I understand what freedom of speech means and the price you have to pay for it. And I think it's a miracle that I'm on the radio, incidentally. I think it's God's hand altogether. With all the impediments that have been in my way, the legal fights and the this and the that and being trapped in contracts that were illegal, I'm still here. It was God's will that I'm here, and there's a reason for it. And I believe the reason is that I'm playing a very critical role in alerting America to the danger they are in and trying to teach you to stand, stand up and fight them. That's all. It's that simple. Either we all stand together or we all fall together. And right now we are surrounded by a, I'm calling them a progressive Islamist government. That's what I call the Obama administration. My definition, a progressive Islamist regime. No one has actually defined them as such, but that's what I think they are. That's how they look like, what they look like to me. And we have to fight against them at every turn. Notice the Republicans have said nothing about this. Zero. Instead, John Boehner, the drunk phony, came out today and said, listen to this. He had the nerve to say that Hillary Clinton shouldn't stand in Obama's way for a trade agreement with Asia. I swear to God. See, the Republican Party stands for only one thing. You know what that is? Business, 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 and business interests. Nothing else. They care nothing about social issues. 
Nothing. Zero. They're only good for business issues. Only if you're a globalist. And if you believe in free trade with Asia, then you ought to sign up with John Boehner, which will further erode our jobs and factories and ship more factories out of the country and more jobs out of the country. That's John Boehner for you. Lower cost, lower cost, lower cost, lower cost, until every city looks like Baltimore, until all the blue-collar jobs are gone, until all the little factories are gone. I read an interesting article. Hold on. I've got to get it for you. I've got to get it. Here it is, right here. I'm not going to have a, t a time to go into it. Of all places, it was on CNN. Lord of the Flies comes to Baltimore by a black man named John Blake. Very long article, but very well written. And he talks about black men, older men who used to sit on their front porches in Baltimore. And <clears throat> they'd, they'd sit on the porch at night. They'd watch the Baltimore Orioles, uh, watch TV, retired steel workers, longshoremen. And they would watch the streets. These old black men would watch the streets. And they're not, they're not here anymore. He said, they're all gone. So the reporter goes and asks a 28-year-old guy about the absence of older black men. And he says, this is old here, he said, pointing to himself. There ain't no more old heads anymore. Where you been? They got big numbers or they in pine boxes. That meant long prison sentences of death. And so he writes a long article about where did the black, older black men go? He, he grew up in a family with a father who worked in the Udomino sugar plant and taught him what hard work was and loved his job. He was proud of his hard work. He proud that he sweat. And he used to take this young black man when he was a kid to the tobacco fields in the summer to teach him what hard work was. Would you believe this? And the article is worth reading. It's a fabulous article because he said there are no working men left in Baltimore. Why? The factories were shipped out of Baltimore. The blue-collar jobs were shipped out of Baltimore by the government. Mr. Shields worked as a steel rigger at Sparrows Point in the Inner Harbor. Other black men worked at the Domino Sugar Plant. He said his father was a merchant marine who sailed out of the harbor. These were well-paying jobs with strong unions that fought for good benefits and united black, brown, and white working-class people. And they helped men like Walter Boyd sit on their front porch when they got older and keep the neighborhood under control. But they're gone now. These blue-collar jobs that built the black middle class of Baltimore are gone. Even the neighborhood businesses that he said remembered from his youth, ice cream factory, milk company, shuttered and gone. Where are they? They're gone because the politicians wanted lower costs. The politicians who are greedy in a way you could never imagine and just lobbyists for greedier men than them uh, closed the factories and shipped out the jobs. And so the, the, the city became hollowed out. There were no jobs. No jobs whatsoever. And he said, I hear about welfare queens and the culture of poverty. But he said there was nothing for them to do. There are no jobs, no factories for them to work in. And that's why you have large numbers of so-called disenfranchised youth. There are no men to teach them the right way. And there are no jobs for them. And that's why he wrote Lord of the Flies Comes to Baltimore. And it's based upon that great novel of its time, entitled Lord of the Flies, written in 54 by the English author William Golding, which describes what happens to a group of upper-class English schoolboys when their plane crash lands on a deserted island and all the adults are killed. The kids who are left try to build a society of their own, but with no adult guidance, they descend into tribalism and savagery. Baltimore. Baltimore circa 2015. Detroit circa 2015. Oakland, California, circa 2015. Your city, circa 2015. And now, in addition to that, we have jihadis amongst us, hiding as law-abiding members of Muslim communities, hiding as members of mosques, ready to strike. They're everywhere in this country. And don't think the FBI doesn't know who they are. This guy was on their watch list for years. Why didn't they arrest him preemptively? Why did they not... In, uh, go into his apartment in Phoenix, Arizona with a warrant. There was, there was sufficient cause for a warrant. Why did they not do it? Why didn't they break into his apartment last week and take away his AK-47 and his body armor? Why was he allowed to buy a body armor? Why was he allowed to buy an AK-47 if he was on a watch list? Where did he get the gun from? What did he learn in the mosque? Who was his imam? Who else is in the uh, mosque there ready to strike? These are the questions the federal government is no doubt asking after the fact. They should have asked it before the fact. Okay, let's go to a quick caller, then a break, then back to you. KMAJ Radio. Bernie, you're up on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Hi, Dr. 
Savage. I agree with you 100%. I just wanted to remind everybody about the Supreme Court decision on uh, freedom of speech against the Westboro Baptist, or for the Westboro Baptist Church and protesting the veterans' funerals with the flags up. You mean with that vile pastor who said the horrible things about gays at the funerals of dead soldiers? Exactly. Fred Phelps, he died, though, too. Yeah, well, but he used to say the most horrible, prov horribly provocative things at the funerals of dead soldiers. It offended everybody. Well, he did. He used to see, you should see some of the signs they put out when they do it. I was, uh, I rode with Patriot Guard and uh, stopped some of those things and blocked them. But uh, it was pretty Right, but, he, but you're saying he had the right under American law to do, to do these vile things, and so did Pamela Geller have the right, no matter how provocative, right? Exactly, exactly. Well, you, no, you're right. That's what I say. No matter how offensive this event may have been, she was protected by the First Amendment. I'm sending you a free copy of my forthcoming novel out next week, Countdown to Mecca. When I come back, I'll take your calls right here on the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Well, there's a lot of lessons from today's, last night's events in Texas. And we're living in very dark times, and they're getting darker yet. Not only riots in the cities provoked by the federal government, but uh, Islamists hiding in the wings, waiting to strike, as we saw last night. And uh, it's only those of us who are going to stand up and speak out about it who can save the nation. It's that simple. Believe it or not, you have the power to speak out about this. And don't take the position, oh, she provoked them. Yeah, of course she provoked them. That's right, she provoked them. She wanted you to see who they really are. That's all. So today it's cartoons. And the government still won't call it, by the way, a terrorist attack. Muslims, Quran, go to heaven, machine guns. No, but still not a terrorist attack. I guess it's a cartoon place... Uh, uh, violence. I guess according to the new Attorney General, Mrs. Lynch, uh, Loretta Lynch, this will be called Cartoon Place Violence. That's what, that's what it'll be. Cartoon Place, Cartoon Place Violence. KKOB Radio up in KKOB. Interesting. Mike, welcome. Fire away. We have less than two minutes. Oh, oh Mr. Savage. Thank you. Mike, make your point. Mike, please. We have two minutes. Make your point, please. Yeah, I feel the right with it's taken all these. It's taken from the English Bill of Rights. Um, the English have it correct. Uh, it's for it was for Parliament. Uh, the, I mean, free freedom of speech. It should be everybody doesn't have that right. Uh, oh, it should only be for the politicians, not for us, we the peasants. Well, and, and, and what? And the government should be able to have guns, and we shouldn't. Well, well, the, the second is for us. The Second Amendment is for us, but the Bill of but the oh, I see. So we should be dummies and keep our mouths shut, according to you. No, no. Well, that's what you just said. We, we're not entitled to the First Amendment First Amendment protections. That's only for government um, uh, representatives. That's what you're saying. That's ridiculous. That's not at all what the Constitution says. The Bill of Rights, rather. It means all of us, and that includes all of us. And that includes us, we the people. Uh, that's as simple as that. I don't have any brilliant way to end the program. It's been three hours of fire. Fire. Just fire raging for me. I've been up since early in the morning. I was on the Alex Jones show this morning. Did an hour of television. Three hours of radio. I could do another three hours of radio. Why? Where do I get the energy from? My friend Brian Sussman of KSL Radio just sent me a note and he said, Michael, as Mordecai said to Esther, you, Michael Savage, are on the radio, quote, for such a time as this. He said, I believe God has granted you the privilege of speaking the truth during this darkening hour. Brian, we all want to believe that we have a special role to play in these darkening times. And the fact of the matter is, with freedom of speech, we all do have a special role to play in these darkening times. Everyone must speak out. Good night and God bless America.